Now, uh, you know, here's a comment, you know, about Stroud. Has Stroud regressed? You know, uh, no, not at all. Uh, I think that's where you have to obviously tip your hat to Notre Dame, okay? It isn't that Stroud has regressed. Uh, the game plan defensively that Notre Dame ran limits what Stroud could do, okay? I, I, I basically equated it to Northwestern. If you guys remember during the COVID year, when, when Ohio State played Northwestern in the Big Ten Championship game, and Justin Fields, who's a great quarterback, he's a starting quarterback in the NFL right now, he looked very, very shaky. It's because of the defense that they play. Rushing only three or four guys, dropping seven, eight in coverage, not letting anybody get back uh, behind them. So making you have to make plays in front, dinking and ducking. CJ wants to get the ball downfield, okay? That's what he wants to do. And, again, it's only his second year starting. It's the first game, okay? Just he'll be able to go back into film study now and understand, look, this is probably what Ohio State is going to see a lot, okay? Because of the offensive weaponry that they have, okay, teams are just not going to go out there and try to match up man-to-man -man with all those receivers and try to run around the field with them. It's actual suicide at that point. OK, so there's no point in trying to go man to man uh, and trying to do those things with with the stud receivers that Ohio State has. So now what you have to do is say, look, you got to try to run the football. That's why Trey Sermon ha had the yards that he had in that Big Ten championship game. Same thing here tonight against Notre Dame. They forced him to try to make plays underneath all night. He got he got his two shots, a Mecca Buka for a touchdown on the out on the deep out. And then down to Xavier Johnson, down the middle on a post, down the middle on a post, where Notre Dame took a gamble, and it was a great read by Stroud at that point. So that's where uh, you have to also tip your hat to C.J. Stroud. When he had a chance to make a play, that's exactly what he did. ND struggle with special teams flags didn't have the have the wide receivers great defense performance, but we have to see a team team against a team with passing weapons and when you're pinned up like Notre Dame was. Well, like I said, Jesse Merkel had Notre Dame pinned back all night. Okay. You got a first time starting quarterback, and this is what you're left with. So you can't be as aggressive offensively. You're in the game. It's not, it's not like uh Ohio State was up 28 to 7 and you had to start forcing things downfield and have your quarterback try to make plays. You're in the ball game. It's a 10-7 game most of the game and and then when you were only down 14-10, okay, you were still in the game. It's only a one possession game. So, hey, give Notre Dame credit tonight, guys. You have to give them credit. Marcus Freeman and Al Golden, they had a good game plan. Um they knew that they couldn't watch Ohio State man for man. Uh, and as I said, they just tried to make Stroud dink and dunk all night. And, uh, you know, that's what he, that's what he had to do. Ohio state had to take advantage and it took them a while, a good two thirds of the game before they finally started to take advantage of what Notre Dame was giving them. Yep. Jeremiah, good comments again. They find a way to get through early struggles and find a way to win. It counts the most. Driving down the field and the score of four, uh, touchdown in the fourth quarter, you know, doesn't hurt e uh, either, you know. So, again, when Ohio State needed to make the plays late in that second half, okay, to close the game out up 14-10 when they took over from their five-yard line, that was a championship drive, okay. Now, it's the first game of the year. I'm not going to sit here and be Nostradamus and say, you know, let's let's look back at that drive as being being something that uh, you know leads Ohio State down the road. But it's also something that you can look at and say, hey, on film, when we needed to make make a point, run some time and go down and get points on the board. That's exactly what they did. Nothing's worse than you know. You can look at it from a couple standpoints. You can look at it and say they ran clock but didn't score. Okay, that's great. But when you run clock and you go down and score on top of it, that's the double dagger right there. And that's that's where the game ended right there for Notre Dame when Ohio State basically went in and ripped their heart out with that drive uh, and, um, and, and just took it right to them down the field. So um, –
Yeah. Mike, it's just about winning games, man. Listen, I'm sure all of us are all excited. We got the news earlier uh, a, a day or two ago that the uh, college football play is going to expand to, to 12 teams. Um, so, hey, right now, we'll, we got to take what we can. It's a 14 format, but right now, just keep winning games. As far as we're concerned as fans, I'll take 14 ugly wins over a couple great wins because that means you're a national champion at that point, okay? So um, a win's a win right now. And, again, like I said, the great thing is, guys, as we know, Ohio State tonight offensively, it was a C-minus game for them, okay? C-minus, all right? Defense, you got to give them an A, all right? But it was a C-minus game offensively, and – um the great thing about it is, guess what? You can go and film. You can watch film. You can learn from your mistakes. And it's it's good teaching material. That's what it is. It's just good teaching material. So especially it's always great after a win. So that's what we like to see, teaching material and get a win on top of it. 